to the 2018 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. We are in the semi-finals. What this means is that we are still in the money zone. The money zone is sponsored by GCB Bank. What this means is that GCB Bank is going to provide for every point and 10 Ghana cities. That means all schools represented here today are going to leave with something, unless, of course, they earn a negative score, which I doubt very much. <laughs> So, at the end of the contest, we will calculate a total amount for the three contestants for each team and the one teacher. And they will take that away. Thank you, GCB Bank. All right, so this is the last of the semi-final contests. And the contest features West Africa Senior High School, Propo Girls Senior High School and our reigning champions, Prempe College. Let's meet the contestants. Prempe College is represented by. What for was ACB? Okay, man. You are welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. How are you doing? You yeah, are fine. You yeah, are fine. Yes. What does it feel like to be in the semi finals? It feels very great and exciting, but as usual, as we've always been saying, we are just going to use this as a platform to glorify God. I see. All right. <laughs> expectations. I'm going away, but expectations. Expect that our end be God's glory. All right. Best wishes to you. Proper Girls Senior High School. Kropo Girls Senior High School is represented by Obin Opoko Ajima in my final year. Harriet Fiako, final year. You are welcome, ladies. Thank you very much. How are you? Mm, fine, thank you. Wonderful. Semi finals. What does that feel like? Madam, it's, it's too great to be true. Like, we are very happy, we are overwhelmed, and we thank God for how far He has brought us. We thank God. So the expectations for this particular contest? Um, we will do our best as usual, and the heavens know how we'll get there. Okay. Best wishes to you. West Africa Senior High School. West Africa Senior High School is represented by... Tadu Abdul Hamid, final year. I could sign in the final year. You are welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, madam. How are you? We are fine. Good. You are in the semifinals. Yes. What does that feel like? You can talk about your whole journey here if you like. <laughs> it makes us know how um, God has been good to us. Yes. That's it? Yes. All right. Expectation for today's contest. We expect that our God of the past ages will be the God for the moment to come. All right. Best wishes to you. So we've met the contestants. Everybody is here to win. Grand finale is not something you take lightly. So everyone is going to do their best. Before I sit down, I would like to acknowledge that the National Science and Math Quiz is sponsored by the Ghana Education Service through the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools. We also have support from GCB Bank, Accra College of Medicine, Medifem Multi-Specialist Hospital and Fertility Center, Lancaster University, Ghana, Academic City College, West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, WACBIP, Awake Purified Drinking Water, GTP, MFA Jewelry, and Horty Makeup. The mentorship sessions are sponsored by Bond Savings and Loans and RMG Ghana, and SciTech Fair 2018 was sponsored by Goal, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, and Talo Ghana Limited. Our media sponsors are City FM and Joy News. This 
It's a prime time production. <laughs> My name is Elsie Fakoffman. I'm your quiz mistress. Contestants, the contest as usual comes to you in five rounds. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. The questions are simple and direct. I'm expecting simple and direct answers from you. If you answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it becomes available to the two other schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, one bonus point. If it's incorrect, there's a penalty, one point. For questions that require calculations, you have a maximum of 30 seconds to present your answer. If there are no calculations involved, you have 10 seconds to do so. All questions, all of them, are to be attempted once only. Best wishes to all three schools. I'm going to start with you, Prempe College. First set of questions will require about 10 seconds of your time, by the way. So your question, Prempe College. Why does soil fertility reduce during intensive agriculture? Yes, Bafuwa. Madam, this is because in intense agriculture, more crops are cultivated meaning there is high pressure on the soil nutrients. Since more crops means they are going to take up more nutrients from the soil. And since more excess nutrients are going to be taken up, there will be few nutrients left, and this will result in low soil fertility. Okay. <laughs> West Africa Senior High School. The species diversity of plants, about 22%. It's much less than that of animals, which is about 72%. What could be the explanation to how animals achieved greater diversification? Yes, Sahne. Uh, animals achieve more diversification by producing more offsprings. Uh, since uh, animals are better reproducers, that is the barriers of reproduction in animals is less than that in plants, where uh, in plants there's a requirement of pollination to uh, effect reproduction, which might not occur due to some barriers. But in animals, they're able to reproduce easily. No, for bonus. <laughs> All right, Krobo girls. Explain how remo removal of decomposers from an ecosystem will adversely affect the functioning of the ecosystem. Yes, Jemima. Okay, um, decomposers help in the um, rapid disintegration of organic matter to produce um, um, nutrients in the soil. So if um, there is a reduction in um, decomposers, the, the amount of um, um, nutrients that will be um, produced in the soil will reduce, hence there will be less fertility of the soil. And then... I'm not going to accept that. Okay. So the decomposers break down organic remains by secreting extracellular digestive enzymes, right? They are also known as mineralizers as they release minerals that are trapped in organic remains. So they release these minerals. In the absence of these decomposers, the flow of minerals will stop. That is what happens. All right, next set. 30 seconds, and I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Two equal frequency waves, each of amplitude A, are superposed. Find the amplitude of the resultant wave for the given phase difference phi between the waves. Please, did you get your preamble? Again, two equal frequency waves, each of amplitude A, are superposed. Find the amplitude of the resultant wave for the given phase difference, difference phi between the waves. All right. So for you, Premier College, phi is equal to pi over six. Yes, Bafuwa. Madam, the resultant will be A root 3. That's incorrect. For a bonus. The right answer. A multiplied by the square root of the expression 2 plus root 3. West Africa. Phi is equal to pi over 3. Yes, Ahine. 
the resultant amplitude is A root 3. Yes. <laughs> Probo Grouse, with the same preamble, for you, phi is equal to pi over 4. Yes, Jemima. A square root of 2 plus root 2. Yes. <laughs> Next set, 10 seconds. State the most important factor that may determine the establishment of an aluminum extraction and purification industry at a place. Bafuwa. Um, the most important factor is the availability of power or electricity. Okay. I'm going to give you two out of three. <laughs> West Africa. What normally determines the method for the reduction of the oxidized metal in it or into the metal? Sahine. Um, the stability of the ore and its, uh, the ease of the oxide of the ore to be reduced. I'm not going to accept that for a bonus. The position of the metal in the electrochemical series, that's it. Krobo girls, why is the extraction or purification of aluminum by electrolysis of the aqueous solution of Al3 plus not feasible? Yes, Harriet. And um, this is because um, aluminum melt at um, the temperature in which um, the temperature in which it is electrolyzed so it has um, other materials such as the alf3 has to be added to reduce or the cryolite has to be added no for a bonus okay <laughs> next set 10 seconds what is the function of a synovial joint? Yes, Bafuwa. Um, the synovial joint joins two bones together, and it provides movement in several planes of the bone, two bones joining the, of the two bones forming the joint, since it has um, lubricating synovial fluid. So it's specifically for the movement of the bones, making up the joint in several planes. I'll give you one. <laughs> All right. West Africa. A synovial joint can undergo an event called dislocation, when the bones become misaligned. However, the bones can usually be forced back into place. Why is this possible? Yes, Sahine. This is because the synovial joint um, has, contains the synovial fluid, which is a lubricant, and this lubricant is uh, able to, like, it is slippery, so the layers of the fluid can slide by each other. Therefore, the bones can easily be moved back into their normal position. I'm not accepting that for bonus. Um, Krobo girls. Why should evolution favor a synovial joint over a more fibrous and fixed joint? Yes, Harriet. This is because um, the synovial joint is more movable and is frictionless, but with the stiff, with the stiff, um, with the stiff fiber, it can't move when it's like it can't. It has no um, chance of moving. So its, its probability of surviving is very low. No, I can't accept that. For bonus. Solve the logarithmic equation for x. That's a preamble. Premper College. Log to the base 2 of the expression x plus 1 plus log to the base 2 of the expression x minus 1 is equal to 3. Yes, Apia? x equals 3. Yes. Log to the base 4 of the expression x plus 3, plus log to the base 4 of the expression x minus 3 is equal to 2. Sahine? x is equal to 5. Yes. 
log to the base 5 of the expression x plus 4 minus log to the base 5 of the expression x minus 4 is equal to 1. Yes, Harriet. We have x is equal to 6. Yes. Next set, 10 seconds, and I have a short preamble. The preamble is explain the following. Explain the following. Premier College, bioaccumulation. Bafuwa. Madam, bioaccumulation is the phenomenon whereby organic matter, usually in the form of nutrients, accumulates as one moves down a food chain. So the accumulation of organic matter or biomass in a food chain. No, I can't accept that for a bonus. <laughs> All right, West Africa with the same preamble. Phytoremediation. Yes, Abdul. Madam, please. Um, phytoremediation is a technique for uh, reducing the pollution of the environment, or uh, yeah, for reducing the pollution of the environment, and also for carrying out other um, biochemical processes, which using plants. Okay. <laughs> With the same preamble. Biological magnification, also known as biomagnification. Yes, which of you, please? Bafuwa. Um, biological magnification is a process whereby waste products or toxic accumulates as one moves down a biological food chain. This due to the fact that the organisms in the food chain cannot remove the toxic products, and so they accumulate as one moves down the food chain. Yes. Next set, 30 seconds. 500 centimeter cubed of an insecticide solution contains 2.5 grams of the active compound. What is the concentration in parts per million ppm? Up here. About 5,000 parts per million. Yes. 50 centimeter cubed of a 0 0.820 mole per decimeter cube solution of CuSO4 are diluted to 250 centimeter cubed. If 10 centimeter cubed of the solution are further diluted to 100 centimeter cubed, what is the new concentration of the solution with respect to copper 2 plus ions? Please give your answer to three significant figures. Um, 0 0.0164 mole per dm cube. You're right. <laughs> Probo girls, 200 centimeter cubed of a 0 0.30 mole per decimeter cube solution of CuSO4 are added to 100 centimeter cubed of 0 0.25 mole per decimeter cubed of Na2SO4 solution, and the two solutions thoroughly mixed. Calculate the concentration of SO4 2 minus ions in mole per decimeter cubed in the mixed solution. Please give your answer to three places of decimal. Yes, Harriet. Okay, we have 0 0.0, we have 0 0.0227. Um, more per dm cube. That's incorrect. Go ahead, but I'll warn you later. Go ahead. Madam, the concentration is 0 0.283 more per dm cube. Yes. Last set of questions with a preamble. Find an equation of variation given that Premier College Y varies jointly as X and Z and inversely as W squared. And Y is equal to 12 over 5 when X is equal to 4, Z is equal to 1, and W is equal to 5. Bafuwa. Um, y equals 15XZ on 
W square. Yes. Y varies directly as X and inversely as the product of Z and W. And Y is equal to 10 when X is equal to 20, Z is equal to 5, and W is equal to 2. Sahne. Y is equal to 5X over ZW. Yes. <laughs> Last question. Y varies jointly as X and Z and inversely as the product of P and W. And Y is equal to 2 when X is equal to 5, Z is equal to 2, W is equal to 7, and P is equal to 5. Yes, uh, Jemima. Y is equal to 7XZ all over P. PW. Yes. And that's the end of the first round. At the end of the first round, Krobo Girls Senior High School has 11 points. West Africa Senior High School has 23 points. Prempe College has 26 points. Four more rounds to go. Round two. This round is also known as a speed race. The questions in the round are directed to all three schools at the same time. For an opportunity to answer a question, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Premier College? Thank you. Yours, Krobo Girls. Thank you. And yours, West Africa. Thank you. If you answer correctly on the first attempt, three points. On the second attempt, two points. On the third attempt, one point. But be careful because if you attempt to answer a question and you are unsuccessful, you lose a precious point. For questions that require calculations, you have a maximum of 30 seconds to present your answer. If there are no calculations, you have a maximum of 10 seconds. Best wishes, everyone. First question, 10 seconds. Why is a Darson Val galvanometer critically damped? To achieve a steady deflection in the shortest time. Next one, 30 seconds. Determine the internal energy of an ideal gas containing 5.0 times 10 to the power 25 monoatomic molecules in a vessel of volume 2.0 meter cubed at a pressure of 1.0 times 10 to the power 5 pascal. Yes, Abdul. 3.0 times 10 to the power 5 joules. You're right. <laughs> Next one. One of the ways in which nitrogen 13 a positron emitter may be obtained for use in PET is by bombarding suitable atoms with protons. Give the equation for the reaction involved, indicating the mass number, the atomic number, and the identity of each nucleide involved. Yes, uh, Bafuwa. Um, the equation is nitrogen 13 with atomic number 7 plus a proton with atomic number 1 and mass number 1 moving into a positron with atomic number 1 and the mass number 0 and nitrogen 14 with atomic number 7. No, and that's incorrect. <laughs> Next set, 30 seconds. 30 seconds each. Find the least value of the expression x squared minus x plus 1 and also give the corresponding, x, corresponding value of x. Yes, which of you? Abdul. The least value of x is 3 on 4 and the corresponding value, uh, the least value of the, expression, the function you give me is 3 on 4 and then the value of x of, for which this one occurs is half. Yes. <laughs> Next one. Find
define the median and the range of the numbers 18, 20, 25, 13, 17, 21, 25. Yes, which of you please raise your hand for me. Yes, Sahine. The median is the median is 19 and the range is 12. I can't accept it. Yes. Jimaima. The median is 20 and the range is 13 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 25. No. Yes, um up here. The median is 20, and the range is 12. Yes. <laughs> Evaluate. 75.7 squared minus 24.3 squared all over the expression 75.7 minus 24.3. Yes, Abdul. 100. Yes. Next question. 30 seconds. A weight mass of anhydrous Na2CO3 is dissolved in a minimum volume of deionized water. The solution requires 18.0 cm cubed of 0 0.40 mole per decimeter cubed HCl solution in a volumetric analysis that uses phenolphthalein as indicator. Calculate the mass of Na2CO3 weight and give your answer to three places of decimal. Molar mass of Na2CO3 is 106.0. Yes, which of you, please? Bafoua. Um, the mass is 763.2 grams. That's incorrect. <laughs> hmm. The right answer is 0 0.763 grams. Next one, 30 seconds. You are required to prepare a 1.0 decimeter cube solution that is 0 0.10 mole per decimeter cubed with respect to copper 2 plus ions. You have a choice between CuSO4 pentahydrate and CuNO3 subscript 2 trihydrate. Which of the two salts will involve the use of less of mass of salt and by how much? Atomic mass for copper is 63, that for sulfur is 32, and for oxygen is 16.0. For nitrogen, it's 14.0. Hydrogen is 1.0. Yes, Abdul. Madam, please, the, it, it will be CuNO32.3H2O, and it is by 0 0.08 grams. Oh, no. Last question, 10 seconds. What is the difference between corrosion and rusting? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Corrosion is the wearing away of the surface of any metal, any reactive metal, in the presence of oxygen and water or moisture. Whilst rusting restricts the definition to specifically iron. So the wearing away of the surface of iron in the presence of oxygen, gas, and water. Okay. That's the end of the second round. At the end of the second round, Krobo Girls Senior High School has 10 points. Krempe College has 27 points. West Africa Senior High School has 29 points. <laughs> round three. This round has the problem of the day. 
The problem of the day is a single question to all three schools. From the time I ask you to begin, you will have three minutes to present an answer to the problem of the day. The problem of the day is worth 10 points. Please put your pens down. Let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. Name all the possible isomeric pentanols, butanols, and propanols with the molecular formula C5H12O. Indicate those that are position isomers. Also identify one pentanol and one butanol that have at least one chiral carbon. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may now begin. Contestants have presented their answers before I award the points. Let's look at the suggested solution from the consultants. This is a problem in chemistry. Contestants were to name all the possible isomeric pentanols, butanols, and propanols with the molecular formula C5H12O. They were to indicate those that are position isomers and also identify one pentanol and one butanol that have at least one chiral carbon. All right, this is the suggested solution. So it's best to organize them. That way it's clear. So let's start with the pentanols. There are three of them. One pentanol or pentan one all. Two pentanol or pentan two all. Three pentanol or pentan three all. Each of them worth one point, so three points. Now the butanols. There are four of them. Two methyl one butanol or two methyl butan one all. Three methyl one butanol or three methyl butan one all. Three methyl two butanol or three methyl butan two all. 2-methyl-2-butanol or 2-methyl-butan-2-all. Since there are four of them, four more points. Then the propanols. There's only one propanol. And that is 2-2-dimethyl-1-propanol or 2-2-dimethyl-propan-1-all. One point. So far we have eight points. Then there are three things left to do. So I decided that the position isomers, that is just goodwill. Because if you've organized them, you know them anyway. So it's just goodwill, no points for that. But the position isomers, the first set is the pentanols. They are all position isomers. And then the second set is the butanols. They are also position isomers. So I wasn't given any mark for this, just goodwill. Now the pentanol with a chiral carbon, that would be two... Uh, pentanol or pentan 2 all One point. And then the butanol with the chiral carbon. That would be 2-methyl-butan-1-all or 
three methyl butan two all. Yes, so um, that was also one point, giving a total of eight points. Now let's see what the contestants did. West Africa, you went for the difficult ones first. And so you have the butanols. You have uh, the first one. Actually, I should have numbered them so that I just use the numbers. The order in which I presented them. You had the first one, the second one, and the third one. Then for the propanol, you had the one propanol. And that was the end of your success. So you have four out of ten. All right, Kobo girls. You have the pentanols, right? All three of them. Then you have two of the butanols. Mm. You have two of the butanols, the ones, the last two that I mentioned. You have those two, right? And then you have the propanol, right? So that gives you six out of ten. Prem per college. So you have the three pentanols, that's three. You have the four butanols. When it came to the propanol, I don't know what confusion you had there. Whether two or one, so I can't give that to you. It's too confusing. All right. And then the chiral, uh, the pentanol with the chiral carbon, you had that right. You didn't get the one. You didn't get the butanol with the chiral carbon. So in all, you have eight out of ten. That's the end of the problem of the day and the end of round three. Please pick up your notepads. <laughs> round four. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with statements. When you receive a statement, please consider the statement carefully and let me know whether it's true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case the, st the statement becomes available to the two other schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, two full points. If it's incorrect, there's a penalty, one point. Best wishes to all three schools. I'm starting with you this time, West Africa. But before I come to you, I have a preamble to all schools. So a preamble for this first set, preamble. The diameter of a solid sphere is D. That's a preamble. All right, so now, um, West Africa. The surface area of the sphere is given by S equals pi D squared. Sahine. True. Yes. Global girls. The volume of the sphere is given by V equals 2 pi D cubed over 3. Harriet. False. Yes. The cross-sectional area of a hemisphere of the sphere is A equals pi D squared over 2. Up here. True. No, that's a false statement. Carbon-carbon bonds cannot be oxidized. Sahine. False. Yes. Any hydrocarbon with the general formula CnH2n will always react with hydrogen in the presence of palladium or nickel. Jemima. False. Yes. The acronym DDT stands for dichlorodiphenyl trichloromethane. Yes, Apia. False. Yes. Copy pods lack a circulatory system and gills. Instead, oxygen is absorbed directly via the skin. Sahine. False. No, that's a true statement. Most copy pods contain one centrally located compound eye. However, some species lack an eye. Yes, Jemima. True. Yes. <laughs> copy pods possess specialized thoracic appendages called maxillipeds that are used for feeding. Up here. True. Yes. 
the numerical aperture of a step index optical fiber equals the difference between the cladding and core refractive indices. Yes, Sahine. Fourth. Yes. The numerical aperture of a step index optical fiber equals the average of the cladding and core refractive indices. Jemima. True. No, that's a false statement. The greater the numerical aperture of a step index optical fiber, the greater the maximum angle of incidence for light guided by the core. Yes, Apia. True. Yes. For the next set, I have a short preamble. Preamble. X is a real number. That's a preamble. So, West Africa. If X squared is greater than 4, then X is greater than 2. Yes, uh, Sahine. Fourth. Yes. If X cubed is less than negative 27, then X is less than negative 3. Jemima. False. False. That's a true statement, unfortunately. If X squared is less than negative 3, then X is greater than negative 3. Yes, Apia? False. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> Silica is a giant molecule in which silicon-oxygen-silicon bonds are all covalent. Yes, Sahine? True. Yes. <laughs> Aluminium oxide and silicon oxide are both amphoteric. Yes, Jemima. False. Yes. <laughs> Catalysts perform their functions without undergoing any chemical change. Up here. True. Yes. Next set, I have a preamble. Preamble to all schools. State whether these statements are true or false about the hurdles to human cloning. So, West Africa. There are no individuals ready to be cloned. Sahine. False. Yes. There are legal and ethical issues involved in the process. Yes, Jemima. True. Yes. A low percentage of the nuclear transfers result in non-viable organisms. Up here. True. No. <laughs> Last set. And I have a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Last. In an experiment to investigate Coulomb's law, Two identical insulated spheres are suspended close to each other, and each is given the same charge Q. That's a preamble. I hope you got it. You got it. Your partner got it. <laughs> now, West Africa. If the charge on each sphere is doubled, the repulsive force on each of them doubles. Sahine. Force. You're right. <laughs> if the separation between the spheres is halved, the repulsive force on each of them quadruples. Jemima. True. 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 Yes. Last statement. The repulsive force on each sphere is proportional to the common charge Q on each of them. Up here. Force. Yes. That's the end of the fourth round. At the end of the fourth round, Krobo Girls Senior High School has 26 points. Prempe College has 42 points. West Africa Senior High School has 46 points. Fifth and final round. In this round, I'm going to be reading out clues. Your objective is to solve the riddle. 
for an opportunity to solve a riddle, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Premier College? Thank you. Yours, Probo Girls. Thank you. Yours, West Africa. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. On the second clue, four points. On the third or any clue thereafter, three points. There are four riddles. Best wishes, everyone. I am an inorganic compound despite the fact that my complex anion has some covalent bonds. My complex anion bears a negative charge of one. Whether in my solid state or as an aqueous solution, I am sensitive to heat and it destroys me. During my exposure to heat, I blow out a colorless, non-poisonous gas. My cation is derived from the second metal of group one of the periodic table. Because I blow out a gas when exposed to heat, I am added to dough that has to be fried or baked. Yes, Sahine. Sodium bicarbonate. Yes. I read all the clues. Three points. Next one. I am a physical constant that imposes restrictions on certain phenomena. I am relatively large, which makes casual observation to, observation to mistake me for an infinite quantity. I am a speed, and the largest of any speed. Yes, Abdul. Um, speed of light in vacuum. You are right. They solved the riddle on the third clue. Three points. Next one. I am a piece of very simple aquatic research equipment. I am believed to have been developed by a British military surgeon marine biologist, zoologist, botanist, and published naturalist. My second recorded use was by Charles Darwin during the Beagle Survey voyage. I consist of a towing line and bridles, nylon mesh net, and a cord end. I am considered one of the oldest, simplest, and inexpensive methods of sampling planktons in standing bodies of water. I allow researchers to analyze plankton both quantitatively, that is cell density, cell colony, or biomass, and qualitatively. So who am I? Sahine. Beach. No. Yes. Jemima. Enet. No. That's not enough. Yes, Apia. Plankton nets. Yes, it's a plankton net. I read all the clues, three points. Last one. I am a central point to a triangle. I may be inside or outside the triangle. I am a common point on some perpendiculars to the sides of a triangle. Yes, up here. Auto center, auto center. That's incorrect. I continue. I am equidistant from the vertices of a triangle. I am the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of the sides. Yes, Jemima. Secure center. You are right. I was reading the fifth clue, three points, three points. That's the end of the fifth round. At the end of the contest, here are the final scores. Probo Girls Senior High School has 29 points. 
Grand Pair College has 45 points. West Africa Senior High School has 52 points. As we are in the money zone, I have some announcements to make. GCB Bank is donating the following. Krobo Girls Senior High School, you will receive a total amount of 1,160 Ghana CDs for three contestants and one teacher. Prempe College will receive a total amount of 1,800 Ghana CDs for three contestants, one teacher. One and teacher. West Africa Senior High School will receive a total amount of 2,080 Ghana CDs for three contestants and one teacher. Bond Savings and Loans is donating an amount of 1,000 Ghana CDs to the winning team. Thank you for being here. I know you were hoping to go to the final. Unfortunately, today didn't work out. West Africa Senior High School. Very well done. Well done. I'm looking forward to seeing you at the grand finale. Viewers, thank you very much for joining us for this really exciting semi-final contest. There's one contest left. I don't think you want to miss it for anything. If you've been with us from the beginning, why would you want to miss the end? So please, make your plans to join us for the grand finale, which will be featuring West Africa Senior High School, St. Peter's Senior High School, and Adesadal College. Before we leave, I would like to acknowledge that the National Science and Math Quiz is sponsored by the Ghana Education Service through the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools. We also have support from GCB Bank, Accra College of Medicine, Medifair Multi-Specialist Hospital and Fertility Center, Lancaster University, Ghana, Academic City College, West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens, WACBE, Awake Purified Drinking Water, GTP, MFA Jewelry and Horty Makeup. The mentorship sessions are sponsored by Bond Savings and Loans and RMG Ghana, and Cited Fair 2018 was sponsored by Goyle, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, and Talo Ghana Limited. Our media sponsors are City FM and Joy News. This is a prime time production. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. Bye.